Hey guys, Stephen here, Fanatic Perspective. This is a very special episode as it is officially fight week. And it's not just any fight week. We got, obviously we're going to talk heavily about the major, major fight, the undisputed championship on the line at 147 pounds in the welterweight division between Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Bug Crawford. And, and that's going to be a bulk of this discussion. But we also have uh, the monster himself, Anui, and Stephen Fulton going head to head tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit. But this is this is a fight week that um, for me, I just had to pull my best boxing friends together just to rap about it. So you already know Care Bear Kieran in the building. We got Brandon We're in back. here from along the wire. We're it's back. Been like a, it's been like a year long hiatus. I'm back. Excited to be back, man. Karen, it's crazy. Karen, this this week, would you is this in terms of what's on the line? Because I'm there's been some gimmick things that we've had, like Mayweather, McGregor, and some other things. I, I don't know if I've been as excited about a fight. I was thinking in my head the last time I had this level of excitement, um, since a fight was announced going into fight week. For me, I was thinking maybe Canelo Triple G the first time. Even maybe going back mm -hmm. to Mayweather Pacquiao. Um, I'm kind of putting that in this realm. Y'all talk to me about the gravity of this because it seems huge right now. I think in the modern era of boxing, for like real boxing fans, okay, obviously like Tank Tank and Tank and Ryan Garcia is gonna end the year probably being the biggest money making fight of that the That was year, a huge right? fight. Mm -hmm. But as far as like real boxing fans, this is the first big one. Like this is this is Mayweather Pacquiao of this generation of boxers. They're not nearly as as popular, but it's undoubtedly the best two guys in the world at that division, arguably the best two guys in the world, period. And the winner of this fight has sole claim of the number one pound for pound spot. And it's not even like, it, like you can say whatever you want. I think Usyk deserves to be in the conversation. Uh, you talk about anyway, if anyway wins, he deserves to be in the conversation. But my thing is this fight's so big just because these are two unbelievably dominant champions that are just going at it for an undisputed title we haven't seen an undisputed welterweight champion ever, so I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, especially because Floyd Mayweather made that weight class as big as it is, right? That's that that's where he made his money. That's where that's the prime money making division in the sport of boxing. And now you're gonna have an undisputed champion between two of the most talented boxers we've seen at that division. So this is this is huge, and like you said, probably the biggest thing that we've seen since since like a Mayweather Pacquiao for like real boxing heads. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon, speaking of boxing heads, I remember talking with you back when it was when when Keith Thurman was taking on Sean Porter, right? Yeah. And, and you know, years ago, right? And and we we knew about these names and we knew, I think even at that time, we knew Bud was gonna move up to 147. Mm -hmm. But I think me and you always said all roads eventually will lead us to Earl Spence Jr. on one side, Terrence Bud Crawford on the other side. Right. Here we are. Exactly. And that and that road getting here has been a roller coaster, right? Because you got Errol Spence getting in two accidents, <laughs> not just one, two accidents and and a uh, torn torn retina to uh, get to this point, uh, losing losing the uh, chance at fighting Pacquiao. And then uh, Ugas beats Pacquiao. Then he runs through Ugas. And um, and now here 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 we are. And. Then also you have Terrence Crawford on the other side coming up from 140 to 147, beating beating Horn, beating Khan, beating Brooks, beating Porter, and then a couple of no names, and then here we are. You know, so thankfully Arrow was able to clear his side of the street up, and uh, Crawford was able to hold on to that belt that he got from Horn, and um, it's been it's been an incredible journey. Uh, but like you said, we are here, and this is definitely like like you had said, Karen, for uh, who is the best boxer in the world? Yeah, such I a think, big fight, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you look at, I want to touch on the pound for pound thing because the the anyway fight tomorrow morning will mean a lot. With that's probably his biggest fight to date. Um, how he looks, how dominant he's been as he's also starting to go up different weight classes and whatnot. Um, I think that'll leave a mark, especially with it being the same week. Now with him not being in America and all those type of things, 
he, the the attention's still not there. But again, people in the boxing community already know what's up in that regard. I agree with what Karen said, though. The winner of this fight. Now, I will say it, with it being, especially if it's a an explosive win, if it's a great fight, um, a fight where my first prediction is this, I think we will get a rematch regardless of outcome. I think this is mm. a... I think this is a I think this is a fight between Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. where regardless of winner, I think that rematch clause will be exercised. Um, and I think that they'll see the benefit of bringing the best out of each other for fight purposes, for challenge purposes, because at the end of the day, one of the reasons why they haven't they ha there aren't they aren't more popular is because they they don't they're not the greatest self promoters, either one of them. Right. And yeah one of the things that they've been keenly focused on is their craft and the love of the fight game. And they've talked a lot about their appreciation for one another. Um, Earl Spence Jr. has made no, you know, he and Derek James, his, his trainer have made no qualms about Terrence Crawford, his journey to get to 147 and the work and the explosiveness in which Bud operates and what they see on tape. They're very, very complimentary of that. But Crawford's been very complimentary of, the fact that Earl Spence Jr. didn't run to 154, his right. words. Right. He, he stuck around. You waited for me. I appreciate that. You're not scared. And so I do think that there's a, there's an element where both of these guys could get in the ring. And it's like they've used the term dance partner a lot. And I think that's one of those things where they could figure out the what's best for my legacy. Like Ali is, is a Joe Frazier. And for a Joe Frazier, it's a Muhammad Ali, right? And exactly. then having going back and forth with that person rather than boom we fight and then we move on you know Earl Spence was on 154 um but but I that's my first big big one as we kind of you know move into matchups of this fight and how it could play yeah. out on July 29th yeah I think uh I disagree uh oh um, so so my thing is look this fight in my honest opinion is going to go one of three ways right either you have a dominant win on one side a dominant win on the other side or you have a, like a war there's no, in my opinion, there's no like, oh, it's just a boring point fight for the whole time. These two guys' styles just don't, they don't, they don't, they don't match up for that. This is also another thing that I'm very excited about. This isn't going to be Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather type chess match. One of the, the someone's going to get hit and hurt. And, and like, 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 like in this fight, like there's like someone is going to be able to impose their will at some point. It can be even, it can be very close, it can be, but it, it will be a war if it's like that. Um, My thing is, I think one, one way or the other, one of these guys is going to separate themselves. And one of these guys is going to win. And I think whoever wins this fight is going to do so in dominant fashion. And I think it's either a stoppage or a one-sided beating. Um, we'll get more into like why, like, like the, the, the styles and breakdowns of it all. I think a little bit later, I want to rush into it before we, we, we get there. But I think a rematch cause would be amazing. And honestly, it'd be awesome for the sport of boxing if it does end up being that war. I don't think it's going to be that though. But if it is that war, I think a rematch would be awesome. And also how outstanding for boxing would that be? I mean, we saw with Canelo and Triple G, that first fight, even though I thought Canelo actually lost that one, it was great to see a rematch. And it was great to see Canelo come back and look better than he did in the first one. And he, and right. he leveled up as a boxer after that as well. Like, you saw him get better and better and better. Um, I think it'd be huge for the sport of boxing if there was a rematch. But the thing is, the last thing you want, we all know this, sport of boxing, the last thing you want is a close war. Hopefully, if it does end like that, like in a draw or something like that, that it's it's uh it's it's not like a, a controversial one. It's very rare in the sport of boxing. Do you see like oh it's a draw and it's just like well I could see that you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's normally like well come on now that's BS. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But I'm I'm going with uh I'm going I'm going no rematch. I don't think a rematch is going to happen just because I think however either of these guys wins is going to be in decisive enough fashion decisive. to not warrant. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So Brandon, try man. All right, so question on that on that thought because I'm I'm also with Kieran on that. There's not going to be a rematch, but I think that's on one side. So are you saying neither side would rematch, or are you more so leaning towards one side not rematching? I would say this. I I don't think Terrence. Well, Terrence Crawford, I think one way or the other is kind of like not really on the on the on the side of a rematch. I think he said like he came out and said like oh, it's not really like what I'm looking forward to next next time, but. I think if, if if Terrence Crawford's a competitor, we know how competitive that guy is. I think if he loses a fight, he's going to want that shit back, like, immediately. If he loses a fight, he thought he should have won. He thinks he gets a job in Vegas by 
and, and, and the business side comes in, he thinks he won the fight. I, I think he exactly. would have won a rematch. 100%. And, and my thing is, I think, okay, I'll just, I'll just get into it. Let's just dive into it. Yeah. I think the, their styles don't, I, I, whoever wins this fight, I think is winning in dominant fashion. And Errol is a guy that imposes his will over 12 rounds. He's going to have a crazy punch output and volume. He's going to attack the body. He's really going to wear you down. He is going to be a, and if he wins, you're, you're going to be a shell of yourself after that. You think right. Kell Brook wanted a rematch after that? You think Jordanus Ugas wanted a rematch after that? You think even the guys that had good fights with him, the only one that did was Sean Porter's crazy ass. And like, even then, even yeah. then, like if, if it's that type of fight, then sure, I could see it. But man, like, it's it's very tough, especially a focus Spence. That, that keep in mind, the Sean Porter fight was like pre car crash, pre I moved to a ranch and I'm mm-hmm. focused on solely boxing and don't have the distractions in my life. All right. I think this very focused, like I'm out here to just take a man's soul, Errol Spence. He his style is not going to give you an opportunity to, to 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 rematch. And on the flip side, Terrence Crawford has stopped every single man he's faced at 147 pounds. That includes. Sean Porter, who's never been stopped, who's a tank, who's who's really, really tough to deal with. That includes, I mean, well, Amir Khan, Kelbrook, I mean, like the other guys, you know, his, his, his resume isn't like crazy. But the thing is, he has been finishing guys for the past five, six years. And, and he does so in such an efficient fa- fashion. And he finds counter punches and he puts guys away. So the thing is, I, I think his path to victory in this in this fight is a stoppage. It's a stoppage. Because I don't see him going 12 rounds against Arrow and really just like outpointing him. I think he has to hurt Errol. I think he has to drop Errol. And when he does get guys hurt, he's shown to be one of the best, if not the best finisher in boxing when he has his opponent on skates or figured out. That can be disputed. That last point you made, Karen, I don't think can be disputed in terms of his finishing ability Mm -hmm. right now, currently in the sport of boxing. Um, He's what has 10 consecutive knockouts, period, going back to 2016 when he won against Postal. And... You know, when you look at Earl Spence, yes, recently he's had more fights go to decision, but Earl Spence did have a run, I believe, of 11 straight knockouts at one point in his Mm -hmm. resume. So both of them are up there. In terms of styles, I want to bring up some stats real quick. Karen's point about Earl Spence's output over 12 rounds. To put that in perspective, according to CompuBox numbers, Earl Spence averages 70.9 70.9 punches per round. This is total punches, jabs, and power punches. That leads the sport of boxing regardless of weight class. The second person is NUA at 68.6, who we just talked about in terms of those pound <laughs> for pound. And then Usyk is third. Um, Terrence Crawford is on that top 10 list, though, in terms of output. So when we're talking about, and Terrence, who prefers to counter a little bit more, still throws a high volume of punches with somebody like Earl Spence who's pushing a lot of pace. So to Karen's analogy about, hey, styles of the Mayweather Pacquiao, for example, people need to understand those those in the sport of boxing, those of us who are boxing heads versus the casual fans who come along for the big fights. This will look good for a big fight because of the type of volume both will come forward with and how they normally fight in their normal punch output, jab to power, power punch ratio. That's number mm-hmm. one. Number two, the main by the Pacquiao thing, when you have a super duper counter puncher in Manny Pacquiao and you have Floyd Mayweather who kind of threw him off at the beginning of the fight and came yeah, forward a, and messed yeah. him up, it it led to a very defensive chess match. That's mm-hmm. a fight I go back and I watch and I actually really enjoy that fight because I can see mm-hmm. them making both of them making the judgments throughout. But the activity wasn't where this fight will be. No. With er, with people getting hurt, and I think yeah, you make totally the, the key word: people getting hurt. It's not guys getting beat, or oh, this guy's cutting the ring off on me, or I'm not getting the tactical advantage. I'm not controlling the pace. There's not that's not going to be the issue. Okay, they gonna both fight in a phone booth. Parents right. knows how to fight in a phone booth. Earl prefers to fight in the phone booth. Mm-hmm. We have you, ever, have you I, ever played 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 with magnets, and you kind of like go like. And you just feel the tension <laughs> between it. Yeah. Like I think that's exactly how this is gonna be, but you just let it go and boom. I have I have some oh man. Yeah. I'll 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 let some I'll let some things go when we get to 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 predictions. But I think it's gonna go one of two ways. I think we're man, it's gonna be interesting to see if if, if Arrow can force it to the phone booth. Because I think if if it if it ends up at the phone booth, that that style, that that style of fight, where that takes place really favors Errol Spence 
Right. But the thing is, Sean Porter loves fighting in the phone booth. He loves blitzing in. He loves getting inside. Terrence Crawford did not let him do that. The entirety of that fight, like, like he got he got hit with some blitzes early on, but man, his footwork, his ability to shuffle out, his ability to L step yes. to get out of there. And that's where I think Terrence Crawford's advantage lies in this fight. His foot speed is unbelievable. His foot speed is 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 the best in the division. And it's probably the best that we've seen since like a Floyd or or a Manny Pacquiao in terms of like just being able to like cut his angles, get where he needs to be. And then also he's the most gifted counter puncher I think I've ever seen. He he will find a shot and set up different, a shot. Different angles too. From every angle, from both stances. If he if you if he could take a step back, switch stance, find it, like slip a shot and then find a one. He's gonna yeah. find his shots wherever he's wherever he's going, he's gonna find his shots. And that's what makes this matchup so intriguing, just because Errol Spence is that you're gonna love this, Steve. Errol Spence is that Tim Duncan. He's that Tim Duncan. He is going to do what he needs to do fundamentally. He's not gonna make his mistakes. He's gonna walk forward, he's gonna impose his will. We'll see what happens though. Cause I to be it's fair gonna be to you, tough. Errol Spence called himself that. Yes, he called himself that. He called he said, himself. He said that. he said he's he said he's Tim Duncan and 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 Terrence Crawford Derek is James, KG. And and yeah. Derek James is Greg Popovich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh to your point earlier, Stephen, when uh you brought up a couple of the stats, since both of these guys have gotten their first belt, period. Um, Terrence Crawford has only gone to the judges twice and Earl Spence has only gone to the judges three times since, mm-hmm. since, since they got their belt. So, and that's only been lately because, because ex- uh, exactly how you said he did have that stretch of just laying, laying everybody out. And that's the other thing too, is Errol Spence like that, that number is even kind of skewed because Errol Spence fought two dudes that just were trying to survive. Mikey Garcia and Danny Garcia did not have anything for him mm-hmm. and they were just trying to make it to the end of the fight. Mikey, like, like they, they they understood Danny, they, Danny Danny fought a better fight than people realize. I, I Danny fought a good fight, but the thing is, Danny after 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 round eight, what was he doing offensively? All right. That, well, that that's that's my thing. It's just yeah. I think I think Mikey was definitely in there trying to survive. Danny Mikey I was trying think, to survive. Yes, Mikey, Mikey was one hundred percent trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he ended like, up yeah. getting he ended up taking a worse beating. Mm. Than getting knocked out, and this is something yeah. I, I keep arguing with with people that the fan because the, here's the thing, guys. Both of these fighters again have a great respect for one another. I said that at, at, earlier in the video, but where where we're getting into to to what makes this exciting is there are fanboys. These these fighters have very strong fan bases full of fanboy yeah. that try to refute fact. Okay, mm. or or negate things that we are obvious to the eye. So if I hear another Bud Crawford person say, "Oh, well, Earl Spence couldn't even knock out. He couldn't even finish Mikey Garcia." When it's like, bro, we know if you watch enough boxing, you can tell when a fighter is literally yeah. just in there yeah. for survival purposes only. Look at that last dude. He, that was, he was, that was working out, jabs and defense like it was. He was working jabs and defense like it was week three of training <laughs> camp. That man, that man was in there getting rounds. And that also might be the difference in having your brother in your corner other than your dad. Because Sean's, Sean's dad stopped that the second he went down the second time. Yeah. While you got Mikey with his brother just letting him take a beat. And it's like, yeah, that I brother think that's... was a little bit tougher than a dad's love because you don't want your child in there just getting worked. Mm. Oh, great point. And another thing, too, again, sometimes, you know, for example, uh, uh, the recent fight, Javante Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. Ryan mm-hmm. Garcia, you know, obviously he decided, hey, I can't, I can't continue with that body shot. But had he, had he of, or, or you know, some other guys, just, you know, a debilitating shot like that, they get up, maybe they're able to survive. But he probably takes way more punishment, right? If he mans up and gets out of the fight, or let's say he goes to distance, I to think me, the fight that's was not over. necessarily a great badge of honor in, in, in a lot of cases sometimes. I, I don't know. No, it's not. And sometimes, like, the thing is, oh, okay, so the, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, for example, the fight was over when Tank countered his best punch having, after Ryan was having a phenomenal round and dropped him. Mm-hmm. You round can't, two. Like, like, round two. I thought, I thought the fight was over then. You saw after that, Tank was working a jab to the body outside, and he was countering him every single time he came in. 
Ryan thought he had him. Ryan, Ryan had a really solid round one. Was starting off had a really solid round two. He's he was catching he tables like on the ends of shots three times and, though exactly and straight three times. But also, <laughs> it's your best punch. It's your bread and butter. Dude rolls mm-hmm. under and bangs you like, and now you're on the ground. It's yeah, like yeah. like how, how do you how do you how do you really mentally recover from that in the biggest fight of your life? You know, and I think that's the thing is like you'll see guys get demoralized, and you see that a lot with some guys. Um, the thing that that's that's what makes Terrence Crawford sneaky though. He, in a way, creates opportunities for his opponents to feel like, oh, okay, I got this shit figured out. I'm kind of, I'm hitting him right now. Eggis, the what's called the, the what's called the, the Russian uh, machine or whatever. Me machine. Is. Yeah, me machine. Hey, me machine ass. dropped him. I don't care what anybody. He, says. No, he dropped him. He straight up dropped him. Hitting his ass. Or oh, Gamboa hitting his ass. Oh, it's called uh, Sean Porter hitting his ass. Every single guy that he was fighting off against, they get a little bit. They get they get a little taste on it. But that's what that's what Terrence Crawford does better than anything and that's the point that i wanted to make that man makes unbelievable unbelievable adjustments Unbe- like like the, the way he will find a finish from from he's reading he's reading sometimes he'll get hit he'll put himself in position to get clocked so he can find that counter later on in the fight and he trusts his toughness and he also trusts his instincts and how athletic he is but to me this fight's going to be very interesting because both of these fighters become really 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 hard to deal with on the second half of the fight for two completely different reasons one terrence crawford gets really dangerous at the end of fights because he's figuring you out he knows he sets up counters from different things the 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 way he dropped sean porter every single time sean porter came in with the blitz or that, that, that long straight he would lean back and throw a check right lean back throw a check right way he dropped him he leans back looks like he's gonna throw a check right sean porter ducks his head he turns his shoulder Terrence Crawford does instead of throwing the check right, stops it, brings the left uppercut right there, catches him clean, drops him. And like it's that type of stuff that he's setting up from round two, round three, round four. He reads off of your reads and he gets better and better as the fight goes on. Errol Spence gets better on the second half of these fights because he's wearing on you. You you get drained, you get zapped. How do you how am I gonna match this output? My body hurts. I can't swing back. Ugas was having phenomenal success early on in the fight. He was hitting him. He was tagging him. And that's going to be the interesting thing early on in this fight. What's going to happen? Because both of these guys have shown I can be hit. Errol got hit against Sean. Errol got hit against Kell Brook. Errol got hit against Jordinas Ugas. Errol got hit against Danny Garcia. Errol got hit and sometimes against Mikey Garcia really early in that fight. Terrence Crawford gets hit early too. How are these guys going? How, how is their style going to match up going deeper into the fight? Because, and I, that's, that's why I want to ask you guys. What what do you favor in that situation? Do you favor the the skills and adjustments, or do you favor the like I'm going to wear on you? Because you can make all the adjustments that you want, but if my body's torn down by the end, how am I going to be able to operate the same way? But then also, how am I gonna how am I gonna find these shots? How am I gonna keep wearing on a dude if I'm gonna get hit? Like if I'm getting countered clean and clean and clean and clean, how am I gonna be able to impose my will? Two things, I think that um, I know you haven't said it yet, but. Yeah. You're going to end up giving me my answer because I need to know from what I'm seeing, Errol is a giant compared to Terrence Crawford. So when you see them both physically face to face, I need to know how much larger of a guy Errol Spence is size wise Mm. and Bud Crawford. And then secondly, I don't think we've seen everything in Errol Spence's tool bag. I think that when he fought Sean Sean Porter, that he chose to fight that style. I think when he fought Garcia, that he was making a point. What's the point that he's going to want to make versus Terrence Crawford? And I feel like that's going to be something that Errol's going to flex. He's got the coach. He's got, to me, the size advantage. And so to answer that question that you said, uh, I'm going to go with the bigger man in the the, uh, later rounds. Mm. I, Arrow's definitely bigger right now. I think uh, this is probably the biggest that I've seen, Arrow. I think regardless, it's another thing about the rematch thing. I think he's got one fight maybe more at 147 because he looks big right now. Yeah, and Sean Porter in recent interviews has been very – it's been very interesting to hear him in different interviews, including his own podcast. But one of the things he mentioned was he said the three best guys he's fought is Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford, and Keith Thurman. And he actually eliminated Earl Spence Jr. for for a couple reasons. And it's kind of what Brandon pointed out earlier. He was saying, hey, I, 
you know, a lot of people say, oh, you fought Spence before the car accident, blah, blah, blah. Like, you probably got a prime Earl Spence. But he said mentally Earl was not there in his prime because he went out of his way to fight me a certain way. Mm-hmm. And we know what that was. That was them talking smack, back so, from sparring. Yeah. You know, they had a they had a personal thing to settle, right? Like, that was... <laughs> That was him like, no, we go fight. Like, you go see me in the streets. Like, that, they had, yeah. there was no strategy involved. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That fight was just a straight exactly. up dog fight. Like, it was a straight just, up dog yeah. fight. Like, against two yeah. people, they clearly knew each other very, very well. They, they could have like, had a conversation that whole fight. Just, they were talking in the ring. Yeah. yeah that, that was yeah. a completely different scenario, I feel like. Yeah. Whereas Sean Porter says, hey, mentally he said two things mm. a earl spence going through the car accident stuff he had to go through adversity things in his life up until that point and his boxing career had been pretty straightforward and mm. after that he you know he kind of realized i could lose this he's more responsible of things and his game plan for opponents is more responsible the reason why he ultimately settled on terrence crawford right was because of what kira mentioned earlier the adjustments and how overwhelming it is mentally and athletically to keep up with somebody like that. But I think it's really interesting to hear him say, you never know what type of fighter is going to show up on fight night. And, and that's where I agree with what Brandon's saying about tools in the bag for Errol Spence Jr. All Errol Spence Jr. has heard is Terrence Crawford's a better boxer. Terrence Crawford yeah. is switch hitter, you know, whereas they've kind of labeled Spence as the, you Mexican know, straight style. up and down, Mexican <laughs> style yeah. bully, right? He's going to leverage his size. He's going to do this, going to do that. I'm interested to see their their wingspan, their arm length, right? Uh, because one thing Crawford that has a reach Crawford, advantage. Reach, Two Crawford's Two reach yeah. in every fight has been a factor, mm. right? Because of it, he, know, he understands uh, tremendously how to use that. Yeah. And it helps him with his angles. Um, where he's able to land some of these uppercuts that you just can't see coming. He, he's coming mm-hmm. from the floor sometimes. And I think with with Errol in that size, can he kind of get underneath for those arms sometimes and get into the phone booth and really make him say, hey, you've been in deep waters before, but you haven't been in deep waters with somebody with that that like me. That's also the right. athlete that I am. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's where the... You know, the that's where he needs to make objects. the difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's where he has to make up that difference. And I think the only time we've seen like rare, like like randomly enough, I mean, the only time you've seen like Arrow really show off, like okay, I actually have footwork and athleticism. The Lamont Peterson fight. Mm. Never watch when he starts like styling on him. It was like the it was like round five. Mm. It's like where he dropped him, but he just starts going around and he's like moving, switching on angles, finding shots, rolling under. I was like, whoa, I've never seen Arrow move yeah. like this before. Yeah. And it, the thing is, like, he has that in him. But the thing is, he 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 has his like he has what works. He has what what he can use. You saw the athleticism peak a little bit too. Chris Algieri early on in his career, he was, was he 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 stalked that. him down. Chris Algieri was a dude that wanted to move around, but he straight up walked him down, did his thing. Now Terrence Crawford, completely different realm than right, Chris Algieri, right, one hundred percent. But I think the thing that's going to be interesting is, like I said, that foot speed that that Terrence Crawford has, the length that he has. It's not that he's this like super duper sharp, like I'm inside, I'm going to like quick counter you. Nah, he's very like, I hate using this word, but it's like flowy. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's like almost yeah. like an MMA fighter, the way he finds angles and shots. Like he's right. like, I'm going to switch. I'm back here. I'm switch stance. Oh, okay. I caught you with an uppercut there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got like, right. I'm leaning back on shots and I'm catching you with stuff that you can't see coming. And I think that's where it's like, it is the freestyle, like flashy, I can do, anything hits you from any angle versus the like i am a straight up by the book technician but i also have unbelievable athleticism and power so karen and and cardio i think this is also going to be a fight though and brandon you chime in if you see this as well i think early in the fight going back to one of the biggest points you made early in the fight i think we will see action and i think both guys will get tagged early in the fight because we have seen Mm -hmm. Both guys get tagged early in the fight. I think the difference that we will see in terms of who has the advantage early in the fight, and if somebody gets dropped early, right? Um, yeah. Even in some of these big fights, we've seen guys get dropped. I mean, I think of even Andre Ward versus uh, Kovalev, Kovalev the first time. Yeah. He had to right. get dropped to get to, to right. get to get his ish together, right? And mm-hmm. it ended up working 
looking out for him. So just because you get dropped out of the fight doesn't mean it's over. See that fight. However, in terms of Kieran's question of gaining an early advantage, I I, I think there's gonna you're gonna see a difference between the shots that they both typically allow to get what they're they're trying to get from a data collection standpoint, and if somebody makes a mistake, because I think that's two different things. Like we've seen Earl Spence traditional southpaw over that right eye, he can get tagged. I mean, we list whenever he drops his guard or he doesn't have the guard, proper guard on, on, or I'm sorry, over his left eye or over his over left guard, excuse me. Whenever he, if, if he drops that sometimes because he's trying to land like one of those looping right, double rights or whatever, and he kind of yeah. gets, he gets a little out there or overextended. Yeah. We have seen people touch him there in multiple fights. Yeah. Terrence right. Crawford, sometimes he can get overly ambitious switching. We've seen mm-hmm. him get touched up or him not really care sometimes yeah. as he's trying to go inside to get shots. So I want to see if somebody's willing to commit a mistake or if it's just, hey, we get a lot of action early, but it's expected before both guys hunker down in their mid to championship round game plans. I'll say this. If either of these dudes get dropped early in a round, the fight's going to be over that round. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Mm. I, I wholeheartedly, I'm like, I just, one Terrence Crawford, best finisher in boxing right now when he has a dude hurt. Like, right. when, the way he went out there, I mean, even when he dropped Sean Porter, like you saw Arrow drop Sean Porter, got back up, really couldn't like put it back on him again. I think Terrence is a different fighter than, than Sean, which is why I think Arrow is going to have the ability to go out there and drop him. Because in my opinion, Crawford's going to be the one trying to move and Arrow's just going to be very calculated with the shots that he chooses. But I, my thing is, if, if Arrow gets dropped, I think the fight's going to end very soon after that if, if Terrence Bud Crawford gets dropped especially early in a round I think the fight's going to end soon after that as well so I just I don't see them recovering from that getting up and then having like a great round after that or like really like right. rebounding from that that's going to be a very very weird thing the thing that concerns me is for both of these guys especially early on in the fight right they both don't just get touched they get touched like Yes. You really like you're playing a yes. dangerous game, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You're playing a dangerous game. Like the way the way he was getting touched by Mean Machine, I was like, bro, the way he yeah. even got touched by Sean Porter at times. And it's like, dude, this is not a guy that you can go around and get touched like that by. And especially for both of them in this fight. I mean, Errol, Errol even said before, he's like, nah, this is gonna be the best defensively that I look. Like, I'm stressing my defense. I'm trying to make sure that I'm good. I'm not we'll see. <laughs> but like, right. I think the Let's thing talk is talk just... about their last two fights, both of them. Yeah, uh, Terrence Crawford fights Abisayan in 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 Nebraska, right? Mm-hmm. That guy freaking landed a, a overhand right that was took his head off in the first round. Yep, against against Crawford, where everybody in the arena is like, oh, like you know, and, <laughs> and Terrence stumbled. Like yeah. the, now he he cold cocked the guy in the sixth round and finished that guy as he you know as he disposed of him as he should have, and then yeah, yeah. Earl, you know. Hey, I know he talks about the mouthpiece situation. He's looking for his mouthpiece, but it all started because Ugas okay. landed the shot to knock his mouthpiece. Unbelievable yes. chip. Like you can hit Errol chin. Spence on the side of the head with a shovel. Always and he'll has. just wink at you, bro. Like it, yeah, he's just always had a crazy chin. Um, you don't want to test that in this fight. <laughs> you really don't want to test that in this fight. And right. to me, the thing is, how many openings is Terrence Crawford gonna find on him? Terrence Crawford is gonna find his openings, but my thing is, is he gonna find those openings? Because there's gonna be a path. Doesn't matter who Terrence Crawford is fighting. At this point, I've seen it enough. If he's fighting you, he's going to find an open to to hit hit you with a shot that's going to stumble you that you do not see coming. He's just that gifted good. of a counter puncher. The thing yeah. is, how how long will he have the ability to find those openings before Errol imposes that will and gets him tired and starts wearing on the body? And he that like Errol just forces everybody to go from being this okay, I'm in here, I'm trading with you, I'm hitting you to damn. You still going? Okay, damn, <laughs> damn, damn! Like, yeah, like that's, exactly. That's exactly what happened to Ugas. Ugas was in there throwing. He was smiling after round four and whatnot. Yeah. And then you see six, seven, even after he hurt him, Errol's still in your face, pushing yeah. you, going and going and going. So that's going to be the interesting thing. I, I so let me let me pop out a few quick questions, and then we'll we'll get to our our predictions and wrap up. Mm. Okay. Uh, corner advantage. Also, I I'm gonna say James, and and once and and that's just given the competition again. I 
I'm gonna say I'm still gonna say it's also. I mean, Bo Mack, you see the dudes that he's got. I mean, what's his name? Keyshawn Davis that he had like just had like an amazing fight. Shakur that he's worked with a lot looks unbelievable. Probably the next up guy, pound for pound wise. I I don't know. Bo Mack is incredible, but also Derek James is like just a master technician. He's got his guys doing well. He's got an undisputed champion at 154. Another dude fighting for an undisputed championship. He's got uh, some of the biggest names in boxing coming to train with him because they like his style. Right. Um. I'd say for this fight in particular, I'd, I'd lean Derrick James. I lean Derrick James for this fight in particular, because I think he's really, really meticulous and he's going to have like something for Errol to go in there and feel confident with going up against Terrence, but they're both a, unbelievable coaches. Yeah. Both unbelievable coaches. I have a slight lean towards Derrick James in this fight only to, ba- to kind of counterbalance what I already know I'm going to get from Bomac and Terrence Crawford as they routinely make their adjustments. I just think in terms of going up against a group like this, I mean, you, you have an argument for two of the top duos, right? Between Crawford and Bomack and then Earl Smith Jr. and Derek James, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're right there. And I think that's what we've seen for those who have been watching the Showtime All Access. That's why the trainers have been shown so much and not just their, their, but their stables, right? Their teams, their camps. They've really gone into a lot of detail in the all access uh, with both of these camps because of how well respected they are. But uh, I give a slight, the slightest edge to to Derek James for me personally. Yeah, I think he's the best coach in world boxing right now. Derek James is. So who do you who do you think will be more defensively responsible in this fight? That's a tough question. <laughs> like. I I'd say I'd see I'd say Arrow. Because the thing is, if if Terrence is worried defensively about not finding his counters, he's not Terrence Crawford. Like, like he's he's That's not gonna be point. Terrence Crawford. Like if he's if he's sitting there worried about what's coming at him and he's trying to like make sure now footwork wise, I think Terrence is gonna come prepared. He's gonna come prepared to 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 move around, not let Arrow cut him off, do that. But as far as Making sure, I think I think what you're going to see from Errol is a guy that's very focused on not getting countered. When he throws his jab, I think he's going to throw his jab with intention. And, and instead of just throwing something lazy out there to feel, the double jabs that he tries to get, I think he knows Terrence Crawford is going to be trying to sit on those and, and come up with a counter for all of that. So we'll see. Yeah, but I, think I, it's, I think it's a mix exactly how you said, Karen, and exactly how you said earlier, Stephen was I think his footwork and then him having the reach advantage, he's going to have to lean on that, especially early to be able to find those angles and use his speed advantage earlier. And, um, you know, if, if Errol is able to push him, you know, after that fifth, sixth round, if, um, if the fight's still going, uh, we're going to have to see, but I think early on it's going to be Terrence, Terrence Crawford, who I'm going to say is going to be more defensively uh, responsible. Any, uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning Arrow, but yeah, we'll see. So, so there's one on my mind before I get to predictions. We, I'd be remiss, and unfortunately, here we are in the sport of boxing where we have to we have to talk about these things because we just saw some some buffoonery happen last weekend with the Gambosos fight. But uh, who you thought he lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lost. I thought he did too. Yeah. Um, I think Cambos is kind of overrated, but I agree with that as well. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Who needs, I think, I feel like the answer for this one's obvious in terms of who would need a stoppage more versus who would want to avoid the judges. I feel like if I'm Bud Crawford, I don't want to deal with Vegas. Um, So I'm going to be a little bit more motivated to try to get this Mm -hmm. thing to a stoppage and not deal with that that type of stuff, what say you guys? Because I feel like there's an element of chicanery that we have to account for with <laughs> with with Vegas and 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 boxing and is is a sport as well when it comes to judging. I I don't think honestly, I think if this fight ends up going to a decision and it's close, that would really surprise me. And because there's a rematch clause there, I wouldn't really feel any type of way if, if we got to see it again. Because I think if there's a controversial decision, regardless of which way it goes, that's true. It is what it is. Like I think you're going to get a rematch in that if, if it's close. The thing is though, I don't think I don't think it going to a judge's scorecards just 
from a from a boxing perspective favors Terrence Crawford anyway. Like right. given given what Errol Spence's output is, given the fact that he wouldn't be able to stop him, given the fact that like and maybe maybe Errol just tanks a freaking beating from him, and like I'm just completely wrong. Who knows? But to me, I think I think if it goes to a decision, it heavily favors Errol Spence. Heavily favors Errol Spence. And if you told me there's going to be a stoppage in the fight, I think it heavily favors Terrence Crawford. I agree. If there's a stoppage, yeah. it would heavily favor Terrence Crawford. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, if it's if it's going the distance, it's gonna it's gonna favor Errol. And um, I don't. And honestly, you know, because when it comes to the judges, you never know what's what's gonna happen. But I think also, I feel like Errol's more liked than Bud, so I think that might play into some of the judges too. Because I mean, who knows what they're actually watching out there sometimes? Yeah. But um, I feel like Errol is is liked more, so that might add add, add into it. And I hate even saying that, but you know, it's it's it's, it's a fair it's, assessment. It's a fair yeah. assessment. Yeah. It's the it's the judges. So yeah, it is. And and I, I'll leave my piece there with it. Um, prediction time, Brandon. How does this fight play out Saturday night? July 29th. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And I'm putting money on this too. Oh. Ninth round stoppage, Errol Spence. Wow. 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 Ninth, ninth round stoppage, Errol Ninth Spence. round stoppage, wow. Errol Spence. So you just think the 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 output's gonna be too much. He's gonna hurt. Obviously, he's gonna hurt. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. I think, I think he's he's gonna over overwhelm him. Um, I think uh, the combinations that he's going to land. I I see a I see a lead left, followed with a a right, and then a left hook to the body. I mean, every every time I try to think about this fight, I'm just seeing a lead left, right, and Terrence just trying to cover up, and then just gets taken out, and he's the body snatcher, so he's got to finish him with the body shot. Mm. What? Wow. All right. So for, for those, uh, the odds right now that I have up here uh, for DraftKings, since Brandon mentioned betting and I'll, I'll have this, uh, I'll have this on the, the screen. As of right now, I'm showing Terrence Crawford money line minus 150, Earl Spence Jr. plus 120 for money line. It's as close uh, as it gets, man. That and it's it, moved because exactly. it was one seventy earlier. Yeah, it, and it will continue to move as we get into the later of the week, honestly. Um, especially yeah. after weigh in, I expect this thing to move all the way up until uh, fight night. Over under ten round, ten and a half rounds, minus two seventy for over, plus one ninety for under ten and a half rounds. Um. And then Earl Spence Jr. by KO, regardless of round, plus 500. Uh, Terrence Crawford by KO, TKO, plus 270. So that's interesting as well. Hmm. Um, but those are some of the – as of today, as we're recording, the, the subject to change throughout the week, as Brandon just said. But, Brandon, you have Earl Spence Jr. defeating Terrence Brad Crawford stoppage. by stoppage in the ninth round to become undisputed. Karen, I'm going to you, man. What are you seeing? Uh, this is a classic one of those. My head says one thing, my heart says another. I'm with you. I'm right there with you, brother. So, what my I, what should I start with? The head or the heart? Well, we know where your heart is. Yeah. No. Okay. Would well, you want the good news first or the bad news first, Stephen? I'm asking. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Look, I'll, I'll go. I'll go I feel I'll like go the bad. bad news is the truth. I'll go so- bad. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll go good news first. Right. I think I want Errol Spence to win this fight. And I think if he does do it, he wears on him. He ends up getting a late stoppage because it's that big of a fight. I think, I think if, if the, if this fight, I favor, I favor this fight getting stopped before, like more than I do it going to the decision, just because I think they're both going to be going at it. They're both going to be hitting each other with shots and it favors either one of them. Like it, like it favors either one of them getting a stoppage because yes, if you're going at it, if you're going to war with Errol Spence, Errol Spence is wearing on you. Kell Brook wants to try to go to war with him. He's going to wear on you. Jordan Sugas tried to go to war with him. He's going to wear on you. I think that's it's it's one of those situations where it's like, yes, if Errol Spence wins this fight, I think he's going to get caught with some shots early on, but he's going to get his own off. And then you're going to see it later on and later on and later on. And 
Terrence is just going to get worn on and worn on. And you're going to see the eyes swell up and you're going to have his body getting hit and whatnot. Right. I will say this though. What my head is telling me is Terrence Crawford is going to win this by stoppage. And I'll tell you why. Um, do I, do I want this to happen? No. Do I think it's, it's likely. <sighs> yeah. I think the angles and the shots that Terrence Crawford can create and find against a fighter like Errol, who's very technical, but also has his, has his defensive deficiencies. It's going to be too much. I think the foot speed, he's not going to, he's not going to be, he's not going to allow Errol in my honest opinion. I don't think he's going to allow Errol to cut him off well enough to get a, a substantial attack to the body going to really wear him down later on. I think he's going to be moving. And I think he showed me that in the Terrence and the Sean Porter fight. I thought the Sean Porter fight was going to be a, a like a, a, a replay of Jordanis Ugas where they're just both hitting each other. And it's just like, Oh, like, 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 like Terrence Crawford's just in like this. I, I have to hit you before you hit me. And that's how I'm going to get this knockout done. <laughs> I think I, and, and the way he just completely, he turned him around. He samboed him. Terrence Crawford has a wrestling background. He's not going to be able to be clinched and just thrown around. I think that's why he, he's transitioned so well to the higher weight class because he's finding his shots easier. He's quicker than Errol. His feet are quicker than Errol. He's finding, he's finding his shots. Well, um, I, I'm just saying this from a pure boxing fan's perspective. Like, I just, I have to be honest. Do I want that shit to happen? No, not at all. I think I want Errol to win. And I think Errol has a path to win this fight. I want to be proven wrong. But I think the way Terrence finds shots is too diverse. You can go from both stances. You can move your feet as much as you can. And you're the athlete that you are. Errol really has to show me in this fight how, ma- how much he can match Terrence Crawford's athleticism. He really does. He's going to have to move those feet. He's going to have to go out there. You can't just try to walk him down and do your own little thing. Yes, Errol needs to make it nasty. Yes, Errol needs to get in there, eat some shots to be able to deliver some. He has to. But the problem is when you play that game with Terrence Crawford, he has shown time and time again, he's going to be able to find the shot to put you out. And the thing that hurts more than anything, we haven't talked about this, I don't think Errol is the same fighter post-car crash that he was before. Even though he has had two really solid performances, yes, against Danny Garcia, yes, against Jardina Sugas, I don't think he has the same snap. I don't think he has the same quickness. And also, I think he still has the same chin, which is awesome. He's able to take the punches that he is. I just don't see the same. I don't know what it is. When he was rising, that 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 arrow spins, I think this fight would be an incredible. But I think ever since that that Sean Porter fight where he didn't show up well and, you know, ended up having the 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 trouble that he did. I afterwards, like with a car crash, he just hasn't looked the same. So I think, I think Terrence Crawford's going to find a shot. He's going to rock arrow. And then you're going to see why Terrence Crawford is one of the greatest finishers in boxing history. He, he, he puts guys away, especially when he has them hurt. And I think he gets it done just because I think Terrence Crawford is that special guy, this generation. Unfortunately, that's, that's my prediction. That's where my head is at. My heart says though, arrow's going to walk his ass down, hit him to the body, wear him out. And then we got it. We got it. We got an undisputed champion from the Soto, Texas, baby. And that's what I hope happens. I'm rooting for him. Don't get it twisted. I'm rooting for Arrow. But if I'm giving an honest prediction, that's what I think is going to happen. Damn, this man picked one of the own people from his own his own part of the woods to you, get I'm knocked sorry. out. <laughs> oh, my God. That's his path to victory, though. Do you see? If, if this goes to decision, if you tell me right now, you can for 100% say this fight's going to decision. My, my answer will change immediately. I'll be like, okay, Arrow's winning. 100%. I have, I have 100% confidence Errol win. You better stay in Frisco. <laughs> Sam. I, I will I'm going to get hated on so much for this, too. <laughs> I know. Let's go, Errol. Errol's going to win this, bro. Errol's going to win it. I, uh, I, I, I do think from a boxing standpoint, though, I'm totally able to get to where you're, you're coming from, though. I mean, from a yeah. boxing standpoint alone, both of you guys, because that's – but that's the beauty of this fight. That's the gravity of this fight. And why we wanted it to get made and thank God it's gotten made when it did. Yeah. Um, because we are still able to see these guys and, and that's why the odds are as close as they are. And and when you talk to guy both guys that they fought, the Kel Brooks of the world, the Sean Porters of the world, all the common opponents that are there, as well as guys around the sport, the opinions seem to be all over the place with with the outcome of this fight. And they've been all over the place in my own mind. Quite frankly, I, uh, I I'm right there with head heart in, in terms of uh, because I've seen I've seen th- those athletic achievements and and really the processing speed upstairs with Terrence uh, that is otherworldly and why he has that's when I think of Terrence Crawford number one pound for pound in the world that's what I think of right um, and and 
ultimately, like you said, the ability to finish. But I've also thought about Earl Spence Jr. How many guys could could come back from what he's come back from and and get 90% of it back? And then that 10% that he's maybe lost in terms of his physical abilities, to Sean Porter's point, maybe he's gained mentally. Maybe he understands how to move a little bit better, and that's why he's now more in his prime than he was before because we know outside of the ring, there were some focus issues there before everything happened. Like his life wasn't all the way together um, like it is now. And I think you're seeing that in how he's conditioning himself. I think you're seeing that with his nutrition and why he's able to get as big as he is, but still make the weight. Cause he's kind of changed some things around that he didn't necessarily take seriously before. I also think back to, competition overall on both sides and i understand terrence crawford and the whole top rank stuff and not getting some of the fights and, and it's i'm not blaming terrence crawford for the lack of better opponents and, and things business. of that sort it's and and he's gotten now he's 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 here so okay i'm not holding that against him however at 147 I'm not going to just give you all this credit in the world, especially for stopping Sean Porter at that point and, and excusing what Earl Spence has done at this division the entire time. Um, there's something to be said for that. And I do think that even, even go, now this is going way back, but we've seen Terrence Crawford when he was at 140. I mean, he wasn't knocking everybody out there. I mean, he had some, when he fought some of the top, the higher tier guys, he had to move around the ring a little bit. He had to survive some rounds and he had to get up out of there um, with wins. So I don't think he's, I don't know if he's the boogeyman here at 147 like we think he is, even though that's all we've seen with the people he's had to fight. And I, it's a long winded way of saying, I'm going to select, and this is, I'm an Earl Spence fan. So. You take that with a grain of salt for those watching. However, I'm taking Earl Spence Jr. by decision. Um, I think this is going to be a very, very close fight. I do think the fight is going to be controversial. I think it's going to be a situation where you're going to have some 115, 113 cards. You're going to have some 114, 114 cards. I think you're going to have a conversation about classic boxing trope we always have where it's one fighter's volume and output and Versus the other fighter, oh, he, well, this other person landed the more effective the counters. punches. Yeah, right, yeah. the counters. and, and Aaron's going to have the ring control, but Terrence is going to have the cleaner, crisper shot. Right. Yeah. Clean, exactly. Yeah, I get where you're going. Yeah. I think for me, and I think that's where we set up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just been yearning for a rivalry. Kind of like what I used to see, Brandon, what we used to see with Riddick Bowe and, and Evander Holyfield. Exactly. Where they went head up in the first two fights, it was 1-1, one, one, right? Yeah. Like, And they were both close. It was 1-1, one, one, and then they had to go to a third one. Like, I've been yearning for those type of trilogies. And That's I feel trilogy. like this, it can get there if they have some BS happen in the first fight. It, like, that's how trilogies start. Let's just right. be honest. Right, yeah. <laughs> So that's right. I'm picking Earl Spence Jr. Controversial decision on July 29th. Mm. Those are my those are my final thoughts. I don't know if anybody wants to. I, I I will I will also add in, dear Lord, I hope Errol Spence wins this fight. I will be in the arena. I will be rooting for Errol Spence in this fight. Um, I'm gonna be working uh like for for overtime covering this fight. Um, if any of you guys have questions, make sure you guys drop them in the comments below. Uh, I will be asking both of these fighters some questions. So if y'all have any fun questions that y'all want me to ask, drop them in the comments. I'll be, I'll be reading those tomorrow. Um, man. Also, it feels good to have a like fight that I'm this excited for. Right. Like, it's like, it's like, it's like one of those fights. Like that. I, I love big fights. Like, cause you just, you have that feeling of like nervousness when you're walking out, you're like, Oh my God, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. You, you finish sucking on that chicken wing and you just, <laughs> and you get dialed in, you know what I mean? You're ready to just like, Go screaming and doing what? The like, whole fight that that anticipation. Your phone off. A fight that makes you turn your phone off. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not worried. Nah, yeah. I'm focused. I'm yeah, focused. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in on this fight right here. So, yeah, it's going to be... 
It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping Arrow Arrow goes out there and gets it done. When I'm in that arena, I'm gonna be screaming, supporting for supporting Arrow. Um, to me, it's just weird because like you just can't imagine either of these dudes losing. It's that type yeah. of situation. It's just like yo, like I can't imagine Arrow Spence knocked out. I can't imagine Terrence Crawford knocked out. I can't imagine that. Like in my mind, it's like they're so unbelievably confident in themselves and their abilities. It's hard to believe like one of these dudes might actually lose on Saturday. I, I love the rare moment when you when they first get in the ring after, you know, after they touch gloves and everything in that first two seconds of a fight where you just the pictures now painted in our head of what they yeah. put together. Yeah. The I love that yeah. moment. Number mm-hmm. one. And number two. Well, yes, I am. I, I am a Earl Spence Jr. fan through and through. I, I, and I'm a fan because I watched this guy come up fighting in like San Antonio when he was like five and oh or whatever. Those early yeah. I feel that this is one of those fighters where more than anybody else, I feel so vested in how his career has gone and Mm -hmm. watching him that that's, that's where my rooting interest comes in. But I love watching Terrence Bud Crawford. I am a Terrence Bud Crawford fan. And I don't remember a fight where I really liked both guys as much as I like both of these guys. Mm -hmm. Like there's not a villain in this fight unless you're on the fanboy side like yeah that, those sides were moved like i don't ha- like it's, this isn't like do you, you guys understand where i'm coming from like yeah. i feel like yeah. mayweather yeah. was so good at, at making himself the quote-unquote villain, the villain even though i like rooting for mayweather but like in yeah. all those fights it was very obvious that people wanted the other they, people were paying to see mayweather potentially lose stevie you're not gonna like this take but that's why this fight's not gonna sell as much as the tank and uh, ryan garcia one will like that, that's that's why if we had a real villain here that everyone wanted to go yeah. see lose yeah. for sure that would be the thing but i think that's where like that's where you get excited for rematches because fights like this can draw a villain out if a dude wins a fight if a dude wins a, a controversial decision errol can be the villain if he wins a controversial decision now everybody's like man he got robbed uh errol should have lost that errol sucks da 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 now the, the the narrative gets bigger and bigger and bigger that's i think that's why rematches and rivalries and and all that stuff it it creates something and you just hear both of these dudes talking about like yo it's like Hagler and Hearns back in the 80s or like Sugar Ray Leonard and them it's just like it's exciting to see both of these dudes really just be like you know what yeah like this is this is my dance partner for this big monumental I'm glad they've embraced that they've both embraced that they've both paid tremendous respect um to to as, as Earl Spencer Jr. said the four kings of the 1980s in the division and and really saying this is our moment this is right. what our, like both of them said this is what my father's told us about yeah. i'm happy that their fathers are in their lives to where they can have perspective on what it used to be like and Thank they you know. they're like this is why we know it's a big freaking deal that we get to be involved in and in getting giving the fans what they want uh brandon any closing words my friend Another reason I want Daryl to win is because I know when he gets on the mic after the fight, it's going to be better than anything Terrence could say. Like, I, he's going to say some. I told y'all I was going to take his, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. just it's going to be lovely, man. And I'm speaking it into existence after, you know, Terrence gets up off the ground after two minutes and 13 seconds. Uh-oh. Into the, Uh-oh. Um, it's going to be. Ready. Crazy. Well, actually, actually, I should say two one zero. Stuck in Greece. Stuck in <laughs> so Greece. Right now. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be great, man. It's gonna be great. So, speaking into existence, Brandon, big fish. you sound like uh, old boy. Big I'm fish, man old down. Fish no fishing pole. Big fish, man <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, baby. So, yeah, you know, and I exactly how you said. I like that they respect each other and they understand how important this is for the history in this time for this sport and um and for the rest of time yeah let's get it on let's have more fights like this i think we're getting closer and closer to having um bigger bouts come along um i want to do this again um i'm I'm gonna have some post fight coverage so whether we do this on spaces or yeah it's gonna be difficult for you because you're gonna be doing post fight at there in vegas real quick before we get out of here though too i wanted to ask y'all who y'all have tomorrow morning anyway or fulton Anyway, anyway, because we're gonna know that we're gonna know everybody that you're gonna be exposed tomorrow when this video drops. <laughs> it's gonna be hilarious. I know, right? <laughs> I, I, I do. Think I got Fulton, anyway too. I have anyway too, but I do think Fulton's gonna last a little bit, a little bit longer. Yeah, 
um, maybe to get a decision, but I think anyway, it's just this is too much. He's he's in the prime of his career. He's too good, mm-hmm. um, and and that power, whether it's to stop him or to to make it obvious with the cleaner shots. It's going to be interesting destroyed. though because I think anyway, probably the I mean Fulton's probably the best boxer that anyway's fought since Donaire, and also Fulton's bigger. So it's going to be interesting to see. Can I, Can he stay on the end of that jab? Can he really just find like what he needs to find? The problem is, though, you get touched by that dude. It's over. I, like, it's ridiculous. That fight's coming up in like four yeah. and a half hours. It, There's accusations. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the future down the road. Like, I don't I don't want this to get like stopped early on. And I, mm-hmm. I, I want him to keep that O. And, you know, you know, if people are already calling him the next, you already know who. I'm not going to say it, but. I yeah. know if he's, if he's yeah. already at this at this point, I want to keep see it keep on rolling. This is the most impressive. Like, well, okay, in my opinion, he wins this fight. That's a more impressive start to his career than Lomachenko had. He's what yes. 18, 19 fights in, and he's going to yes. be a four division champion. Mm-hmm. He's already undisputed at one eighteen. He's now going up to one twenty two. He's gonna if, if he beats Fulton, he'll be a unified champion at four different weight classes. Less than twenty fights into his career, and he and it say he gets it done by stoppage, bro. I, he's 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 uh, he's ten fights away from submitting himself in the goat conversation. Like that's just no, that's that's, that's, that's how a that's reality. How, yeah, and I think it sucks that he's in a to... smaller weight class because like uh, people aren't going to give him as much credit. But man, if he really does that, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, that's the issue. The the I mean, how far can he go up? Because I know uh, yeah. Brandon doesn't want to mention uh, yeah. Pac Man. Uh, uh, but that that's kind of how he he rose right and right, right. Yeah. and when you think about going up to maybe he gets up to 130 or something like that i don't i mean i don't know how far he goes but that should stop it at 130 i promise he's not going up to 135 <laughs> i promise he's not going up to 135 you do not want to see i mean hey you i'm sorry he's <laughs> it, yeah he, those, those guys that you do yeah, with yeah. size the, and crazy t- yeah now 130, 130, you can get there. 130, that's, I'll that's, see, I'll see that's where he's hey, hey, 135. There's some brothers outside at 135. And 135 is, is is sharks and gorillas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope that you hear this. <laughs> Don't go Drug outside. Drug dealers at <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I I do think uh with with uh with Fulton though, there's accusations that he has been drained. And he he doesn't look strong from people in the in the sport I've I've, I've heard, and, and they don't like the way his body looks. But we'll see. Wishing him the best of luck from the United States uh, tomorrow morning uh, as this as this video will debut, and will outcome will already be announced. Shout but, out to him though. They they, right? they can establish Philly. They can establish Philly if he if he goes out there and does it, man. So we'll see what happens, brothers. Uh, oh yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Post fight. Uh, I'll be back in some capacity. We'll yeah. get Karen's thoughts. But look, boxing, hey, we're, we're, this is actually becoming a really good year, especially when you think about the 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 Jamel Charlo, Canelo Alvarez fight. Canelo Alvarez has now come over to PBC, and I can't wait to th- – that, that's going to be a whole nother – I feel like that deserves its own video. Charlo. And that shit's gonna be crazy. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah. Jer- Jermel out of both yeah. of the Charlos too. Jermel is the most unhinged one. That's gonna be <laughs> that lead up is gonna be crazy. I can't I like I cannot imagine Jermel Charlo getting like knocked out or something like, like that. That would be crazy. Like just the, his reaction to it all. But then also he's gonna he is going to fight Canelo. Like he is going to go in there and like I like I do not care who you are. I'm going to fight you. But We'll see. Boxing's in a good place. This uh, yeah. I made a, I made a video earlier this year just roasting boxing, saying it sucked. And <laughs> I had Steven Espinoza on Twitter talking about this kid knows nothing and da 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 da. No, and I was no, like, Bro, no, no, no. The Bruce fights were Yeah, no. not me, but Steven but, Espinosa. But yeah. now, but hey, no, no, no. But look, I made that video. Now you have all these big fights being made. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like it's it's been cool. Yeah, take Davis Ryan Garcia made. You got this one made. You got Canelo versus uh Charlo, like a bunch of different good fights made. So it's been cool. It's been it's been smooth. It's been smooth. Yeah, I welcome. think the only thing that they had you're to look forward to them was Espinosa. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, well also to just, hold that man accountable to do his damn job. Uh, yeah. when, when YouTubers start making more money in your sport because y'all can't make good fights happen, right. this is what happens. 
Shout out to Jake Paul. He changed the game. And I will say that with confidence. He has. He, he has changed the landscape. But, yeah, it is what it is. Shout out Y'all, to Brandon wearing that uh, that that uh, state runner-up shirt. Hit the like button. Hit the, Wow. Hit the like button. Y'all subscribe the whole bit. We had a little boxing corner today. It's a it's fight week. Let us know in the comments what your, what your predictions and thoughts are for the fight. And any questions you have for Karen, please get them in. He is on his way to Vegas. Uh, it's for fight coverage for overtime. Oh. Oh, know. Okay. you know, we're about to turn the cameras off so these so these guys can go at it. Y'all appreciate you both coming on very much. Peace. Peace.